In this video, we're going to talk about 3D orbiting in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about 3D orbit with Fusion 360. Now, you might be thinking that you've used Fusion 360 for a while, you know how to orient your models, you don't really have any problems. But Fusion 360, at least the initial setup, will default to an unconstrained orbit. And I want to go over the two different types of 3D orbiting and some tips that you may or may not know. So the first thing is that the bottom center of our screen inside of our sort of view options here, we have free orbit and constrained orbit. Now, when you set up Fusion 360 in your user preferences, under the general section, you can see here that the default orbit type is constrained orbit or free orbit. Now, it depends on which standard or shortcuts you're using. I have mine left at the default Fusion 360. If you change that, then it will modify this. And then you can also do things like reverse the zoom direction and enable the camera pivot. Uh, so this is important because it'll use a camera pivot point for view rotation. And I wanna make sure that that's turned on. So with that in mind, when you're using Fusion 360 and you go to rotate an object, as we hold down the shift key and use the middle mouse button, you can see that it's rotating about that green dot in the center. It's only displayed when you hold down the middle mouse button. If the mouse is directly underneath it, we're simply moving up and down and we're just sort of rotating that model. I'm gonna to go to a right view, hold down shift, and when the dot is in the center of the object and we rotate left and right, as long as we're in that horizontal plane or axis, the object, in this case the car, is gonna move left and right. Where this starts to get a bit crazy is when your mouse is sort of out here and you have to do this little wiggle to try to get the model where you want it. So when you're doing that, something to consider is that if you click the middle mouse wheel, so I'm gonna go ahead and double click it to zoom to fit, and then I'm gonna click it, it's going to move that green pivot point wherever I put the cursor. So for example, if I wanted to pivot about the wheel, now my pivot point is located at the center of the wheel rather than the center of the vehicle. Now that's true until we decide to put it somewhere else, or if I double click, and it's gonna reset it at the middle. So that can be helpful, especially if you're trying to focus on a different area of the design. For example, if I wanted to work on the skirt here, I would, might wanna put the pivot there so it's a little bit easier for me to just focus on that area. So with that said, let's also take a look at this constrained orbit type. Now it's a bit different when you enable it down here. I'm gonna move the, the car just a bit to make sure that we can see it. What you end up having is you've got this circle or this crosshair around your object. Now, depending on where the cursor is, you'll either get the free orbit or the unconstrained orbit, or it'll be constrained. So for example, if we hover over this circle, what we're gonna be doing is rotating about the center of the vehicle. If we go to this top line, what we're doing is we're rotating vertically or rotating horizontally. And once again, we have the free or unconstrained orbit if the cursor is not on any of these reference lines. So this can be helpful, but it is also problematic depending on the current position of your view. So you might need to do a little bit of work to sort of get it into, uh, into position. Now, one thing that I wish that Fusion had that programs like SOLIDWORKS have is the ability to use your uh, arrows on your, on your keyboard to be able to move the object around. Now we don't have that if we're using the up and down arrows or we're trying to use shift or control, nothing happens on our model. Uh, and in programs like SOLIDWORKS, you're able to use those to rotate a certain amount, 15 degrees every time you press on the arrow. And that can be pretty helpful and also allows you to pan your design. So we have what we have when we're working in Fusion 360 and we need to make the best of it. So hopefully those tips, resetting that pivot point as well as using the constrained orbit can be pretty helpful for you. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.